Chef Thomas, greetings. I am Paul Mays. I am your servant. Yes, you may not like that. You may not consider that to be the case, but I am indeed your servant. Um, I'm going to look at your comments and provide this feedback for you in this um, live, not live, this recorded teaching video. Um, I love you. I'm sad for you. And uh, I'm going to give you some biblical truths that I hope you will consider carefully and honestly. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess we'll just use this one. All right. Uh, Paul Mays, Acapella, Hymns, and more. That's me. Uh, Paul. There is no one way of salvation. All paths are valid. Thomas, quoting you. I am the way. I'm not I am the one of the many paths that you can take. That's Jesus, the Son of God, having all authority, Matthew 28, 18. Who told you that? Okay, you say there's no one way of salvation. Jesus said in Matthew 7, broad is the way to destruction, and many there be that go in and out. Narrow is the way to eternal life, and few there be that find it. So should I believe the one holy Son of God who can't lie, who gave himself willingly for me and you on the cross after a lifetime of never sinning? Or should I believe Thomas, who has left his one holy bride? Okay, I'm going to go hard, and I love you. That's why you're being corrected in this way. See, there's something I'm noticing here. You, were, um, you have left the one holy bride, and that's not good enough. So what you're doing is you're coming guns blazing after the... What is that all about? How is that beneficial? If you really believe that she is not the one holy bride, what are you doing? Why don't you just leave? If you're gonna go, if you're gonna leave, go leave quietly, okay? Don't come back fighting against her, okay? So that's a firm rebuke by the authority of Jesus Christ, okay? That's what you're getting here. Hopefully, the result of this rebuke is that you will repent and come home because we love you. Biblical discipline, which we're gonna touch on, works every single time. So for those who are watching and they don't know what's going on yet here, so I, I've got a video called The Church of Christ. It's an a cappella hymn. It was co-written by Joe Austin and myself. I posted it, and Chef Thomas, a YouTube user, Chef Thomas all run together, one word, has come on guns blazing, speaking against her, calling us cultish, of course. We don't have the authority to make the one way of salvation in the one pre-denominational church belonging to Christ, his one holy bride, Jesus isn't a polygamist. We don't have the authority to make that exclusive. We're not the one who made it a cult. It's Jesus who said, this is the one way. If you want to come to heaven and be with me and be with God, the Father who loved you enough to send me, you'll do this. He has the authority to make that one way of salvation in his one church exclusive. We don't, okay? So, yes, this is a firm rebuke for our friend, um, uh, erring Christian, Chef Thomas. All right, so any religion that's exclusive, thinking that they're the only true faith and that every other is wrong isn't worth being in. Okay, well, what you've done is you've rejected his one church. You've rejected Jesus' authority because he's the one who made it exclusive. Uh, you reject Ephesians 4 when you say thinking they're the only true faith. We don't think we are the only true faith. We think the faith in Jesus Christ is the only faith. The Bible says there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism in Ephesians 4, 5. So we actually believe that. And that is our faith in God, in the one faith of Jesus Christ. It's called Christianity. That's what it's called. So you've actually pushed against, you know, the authority of Jesus, Jesus, Ephesians 4, 5, which is again, Jesus, and that every other is wrong. Well, there isn't every other. There's only one faith. That's not an opinion. That's Ephesians 4, 5. God breathed fact. Completely sufficient God breathed word says that it's there, there is just one faith. Ephesians 4, 5, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. If God exists, uh, really? L I'm just going to go right here. You know what genetic code is? The DNA, the genetic code? You know, code can't write itself, right? Okay, enough said. There's a God. He breathed us out. He breathed, he spoke us into existence. Uh, a design indicates a designer. We have a genetic code. Code can't write itself. It was written by God. So yes, there's a God. It wouldn't, if God exists, it wouldn't pick one exclusive group. Yeah, his bride. 
Yeah, he, he said, here's the one way. If you want to be saved, you will do this. We obey. We're that one church. Yes, his church is exclusive. Uh, and everyone else, and send everyone else to hell forever. Yeah, anyone not obeying the gospel will suffer flaming and fi flaming fire in the vengeance of God. That's Second Timothy, I'm sorry, Second Thessalonians 1.8. The love of the God, the church of Christ's worship, Okay, we, we worship God, the, is a fear and control-based love. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Yes, it's proper reverence. Yes, and fear for the one who spoke you into existence and has the power to do whatever with you he chooses to do. So yeah, it is fear-based. It's also love-based. Wow, God had the power to speak me into existence and this whole world and the intricate water cycle and the intricate dance of the heavens. And yeah, he's awesome. I want to be with him. Wow, that's the love of God. Oh, I have the fear of God too? Yep, that's the proper combination of love and fear. He's awesome and I want to be with him. I want to submit to him. I want to obey him. I want to revere him and worship him. That's biblical love and fear. Yes, we fear God. That's our whole duty, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Do everything for me, worship me, well, yeah. Please me, well, yeah, he's worthy of praise. Don't think for yourself, well, of course not. Of course don't think for yourself. Now, what you're trying to say is something different from what the Bible teaches on this. Um, it is not in man that walks to direct his own steps from Jeremiah. And there's also, there's a way unto man that seems right, but that way leads to destruction. That's what you're leaning on. That's what you're relying on. You, you have made yourself your own God. Yep. But when we love God and fear God and properly revere God, we're going to look at his word that completely equips us, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. We're going to be like, yeah, I want to be with God. I want to do what he says right because it's not within me from Jeremiah to determine what is the right thing to do. I'll go to his word because he loved us enough to give us the parameters for a healthy, spiritual, healthy, physical life so I can be with him. Yes, amen, somebody. That's good stuff right there. Uh, don't think for yourself. Don't rely on worldly understanding. Well, lean not on thy own understanding. That That's literally what God told us. Well, unbelievable. Don't associate with the world. Well, we're supposed to be apart from the world. We are set apart. We are a peculiar people. It's weird. I'm weird to you because I actually think, wow, I should serve God and I should fear God. Yeah, that's weird to you. Yeah, we're peculiar people, all right. Um, Only me, me, me. Hmm. God is a jealous God. What passage is that? I've referenced a couple and didn't give you the book chapter verse designation because I didn't have it right here yet. I will. I'll keep going until I get it all up in there. Let's see. Jealous God. Yeah. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Yeah, it's me, me, me. Yeah, and he's worth it. He's worthy of it. We better. It is It is all about me, 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 meaning God. Yes. I love you, but if you don't do everything my way, I'll send you to burn for all eternity. Yes, he does love us enough to say, do this, I will save you. Yeah, live this life and I will save you. Yeah, do this and I will apply the blood of Christ, live the Christian life faithfully, part of the one faith, the one way of salvation. Yes, in my one pre-denominational church, the one that my son purchased with his own blood, which is in existence hundreds of years before any denomination. Yes, yes, yes. That's what God did for us. And we love him and fear him enough to do whatever he said. But some people are like, hmm, I'm going to do what I want. They are idolaters of self. Love you enough to tell you this. Sure, I could have wiped out sin at the beginning. <laughs> he did. He did. He sent Jesus. That's how he wiped out sin at the beginning. Mm -hmm. He planned Jesus and the church and his blood Jesus and God planned that out before all time. So he did what you're claiming he, he could have done, but he didn't love us enough to do. Yeah, he did. But humanity had to suffer at my hands. No, humanity had to suffer at their own hands, just like you are now, because of your open rebellion and you come guns blazing against the one church belonging to Christ. Yeah, that's why you're suffering. 
I have suffered for my sins. You have suffered for your sins. We do not suffer because of God. We suffered because we rebelled against God. But humanity had to suffer, and I had to kill my own son, my own son, because I had to show you how much I love you. And that's a problem? You have a problem with God who loved us enough to kill his own son for us? Let us kill him? You have a problem with that? Open rebellion. That's what you're practicing. You are a cancer that was cut out from the church. I'm going to illustrate this. I had to show you. Let's not get started on all the bullying and shunning. Oh, you mean biblical discipline? Oh, you mean withdrawing from every brother that walketh disorderly? Yes. So you're calling it bullying and shunning. That's leaning on your own understanding. That's what you perceive. Here it is. Biblical discipline works every single time. Let's look at that. Biblical discipline as God defines it. Let's see. Walketh. Disorderly. And now we command you, brethren, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, in the name of, by the authority of, our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. I'm willing to bet that you were probably corrected. You got your feelings hurt. You got your hackle raised. Your pride stepped in. And you didn't want to uh, repent of whatever it was that you were doing that caused them to say, hey, man, you need to get right with God. Instead, you rebelled. And then they withdrew from you. So they followed the biblical pattern, likely. I can't say for sure I wasn't there. However, judging from your words here, we know exactly who you are. Yeah, you're in open rebellion against God. The Christians loved you enough, loved you enough to rebuke you by the authority of Jesus Christ and you did not repent, and then they're like, fine, we're going to do what God said. We're going to obey God no matter what. We're going to obey God by loving you and rebuke. We're going to obey God by loving you through withdrawing from you walking disorderly, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. Look, I love you, man. You are in open rebellion. If you're not going to repent, go away quietly. You understand? Stop causing problems, more problems than you were causing before. Biblical discipline works every single time. Every time. Either you repent, which is what we love you enough to encourage you to do, or you are cut off so that you do not infect the rest of the body with your open rebellion. Every single time biblical discipline works. Yeah, I'm going guns blazing against you because you came guns blazing against the church speaking against his one holy bride. So you can repent now, okay? That's your option. Repent. Happened to all the bullying and shunning other trauma has happened to me and others. Look, that's a snowflake right there. Oh, don't tell me I have to stop sinning. It'll hurt my feelings. Yeah, that's what you're getting right here. Hard, firm, loving, biblical rebuke. All, the, all while the church members stick up for each other. Oh, you mean we are united in the doctrine of Christ? Yes. And blame the victims for being worldly. Oh, so now you're a victim. There's your snowflake right there. It's It's... Sad, disgusting, I fear for you. Yeah. So this is why this was made for you. It's out of love and fear for your immortal soul. Stop speaking against his one holy bride. Stop living in open rebellion, claiming there are multiple ways when Jesus said there's one. Stop claiming that all faiths are valid when Jesus God said that there is one faith, Ephesians 4, 5. Just stop. If you're not going to stop, if you're not going to repent and come home to his one holy bride, stop going guns blazing against the one holy bride of Jesus Christ. Stop. Firmly, you have been rebuked. Stop. What we want you to do is repent and come home. This is the firm rebuke you need. You do. When you repent and come home to the bride, let me know. Yeah, come to me and tell me. Paul, I needed that firm rebuke because I was living in open rebellion. I repented. You know what will happen? I will rejoice with you. I will rejoice and thank God for your repentance just as the angels will be rejoicing over one sinner that repents. I love you, Thomas. This is a firm rebuke for your benefit. I am fighting against Satan on your behalf. 
rebuking those lies that he has taught you. <laughs> oh, y'all are a cult. Yeah, Satan wants you to believe that. That's what he wants you to believe. I love you, Thomas. Please repent.